country's national day intended to celebrate the birth of the modern Australia. Indigenous Australians performed in a smoking ceremony in Sydney, while Prime Minister Scott Morrison honoured the traditional custodians of the country during a national flag raising and citizenship ceremony in Australia's capital, Canberra. Now, the January 26th public holiday marks the date the British fleet sailed into Sydney Harbour in 1788 to start a penal colony. We recognise Indigenous peoples right across our land, from the Torres Strait Islander people in the north to the Palawa in Tasmania, to the Wajak Nungja people across the Nullarbor in Perth, and the Larrakia people in the top end. Like the country itself, Australia's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples are diverse, they're unique, and they connect us through time. All right, that's just a sneak peek of uh, what has happened as Australia celebrates its National Day. And to talk more about that, joining me now in studio is Luke Joseph Williams, who's the Australia High Commissioner to Kenya. Really good to see you. And uh, just to mention that he's not just the High Commissioner to Kenya, also represents uh, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, as well as the uh, Australian Ambassador designate to Burundi and Somalia. A very expansive docket you have. It is indeed, mm. okay, and uh, thank you for the invitation to appear today. Really, really good to have you here in studio. And just starting off with the uh, Happy Australian National Day, how are we celebrating here, it here in Kenya? No, thank you. Um, no, it's really a day of reflection for Australians to think about what it means to be Australian. Mm -hmm. um, and as the Prime Minister said earlier, uh, it's really important uh, mm -hmm. that we understand and appreciate mm -hmm. our indigenous history mm -hmm. and heritage because mm -hmm. as you said earlier the date 26th of january yeah. marks the occasion of that landing of uh, the uh, british fleet mm -hmm. um, and yet our in aboriginal and torres strait islander uh, peoples have been in australia for 65,000 mm -hmm. years and in recent years there's been a, a big effort undertaken yeah. to better understand uh, why we should be celebrating the 26th of January um, and to ensure that all Australians are included in the uh, understanding of what mm -hmm. Australia means. Mm -hmm. So there's a big debate about that. Yes. <laughs> there are uh, differing views as to whether we should even still be uh, using 26th of January as the day to celebrate Australia Day. Um, so that debate is ongoing mm -hmm. um, but it's really important mm -hmm. now that there is that growing right. um, recognition of our indigenous mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. How significant has this been um, throughout the years since 1788 and it keeps changing as we go like you say the reason to celebrate the day some controversy around it especially from the indigenous people how best do we get everyone on board? Well Australia is uh, modern Australia is a country of migration um, so it's ever-changing mm -hmm. and the way in which our national identity is evolving is one in which it's not just about um, the original occupants of the land, mm -hmm. uh, the British colonisers, right. it's also about the successive waves mm -hmm. of migration we've had and so there is a really robust mm -hmm. debate uh, and discussion going on in Australia right now and has been going on for some decades uh, that we are uh, rethinking uh, our Australian identity and, and ensuring that we're as inclusive and diverse mm -hmm. as possible because that's what we are as a people now going forward. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the perhaps activities lined up around this even in East African countries that you represent, how are we celebrating? Well, traditionally Australians love a barbecue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here in Kenya, uh, appreciation of well-cooked meat yeah. would be well understood. So, you know, we, we do um, love to uh, celebrate outdoors mm -hmm. where we can. Um, we love to celebrate mm -hmm. and get together with family mm -hmm. and friends 
and so that's principally what's happening today. Mm -hmm. uh, but as well, it's a day in which uh, the uh, Prime Minister announces the annual Australia Day Awards yeah. uh, in recognition of those Australians who have made a significant contribution uh, to the Australian community. Um, and so it was very pleasing to yeah. see some really well-deserving names appear in that uh, honours list today mm -hmm. um, and the Australian of the Year has been named as uh, Dylan Orcott mm -hmm. who is a famous um, tennis player, player yeah. with a disability mm -hmm. operating out of a wheelchair and he's been very much uh, campaigning mm -hmm. for greater rec recognition mm -hmm. of those with a disability and that is a key priority mm -hmm. for Australia going mm -hmm. forward. It's part of our diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. agenda. Okay, great. Uh, quite big uh, uh, th th that particular announcement from the Prime Minister and interestingly the announcement of those who've made significant strides and contribution um, to the country over the years this has happened uh, but then perhaps just my last question around this before we get into Kenya and, um, and, and Australian relations back to the question of indigenous groups and how they feel about this day and I've seen their conversations around do we need two separate holidays perhaps your personal thoughts around that no, it's been an ongoing debate mm -hmm. as to whether uh, we should call 26th of January Australia mm -hmm. Day. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain uh, proponents um, uh, of uh, renaming it Invasion Day mm -hmm. because that's how they perceive yeah. what happened in 1788. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been, again, an ongoing discussion about changing the constitution mm -hmm to explicitly recognise mm -hmm. our Indigenous okay. population. Um, and there's been, uh, again, debate about whether we need to have different holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, again, an important holiday in the Australian calendar is Anzac Day, mm -hmm. which is celebrated uh, in 25th of uh, April every mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, a certain segment of the uh, our community that argue that that was the birth of modern Australia right. when we uh, were defeated at Gallipoli in Turkey in World War One. Mm -hmm. um, so there are different views and ideas around uh, what an Australian day should be and how it should be represented. I don't think we're going to see the end of that <laughs> discussion yeah. here today, um, but it's it's a necessary one mm -hmm. that we have to have to go through. That's a necessary conversation. Let's talk about uh, Kenya, Australia, relations, uh, being the High Commission to Kenya, um, the very, uh, various aspects of the bilateral relations that Australia is very keen on, one of them uh, being um, regional security, counter-terrorism, and we're seeing bouts of that, not just in Kenya, we saw in Uganda a few months ago. Um, what are some of the activities around that? How are we helping uh, these East African countries, or how are we collaborating with this? Uh, East African countries uh, to ensure regional peace and stability? Well, both Kenya and Australia mm -hmm. uh, are significant contributors mm -hmm. to the counter-terrorism effort. Uh, so both of us have suffered over many years yes. from terrorism um, and we've been determined to collaborate uh, in the counter-terrorism space. So both Kenya and Australia are active mm -hmm in multilateral agencies mm -hmm. uh, to find ways in which we can get greater cooperation mm -hmm. in the counter-terrorism space. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very pleased to see Kenya on the UN Security Council mm -hmm. uh, right now and mm -hmm. playing a very prominent role mm -hmm. regionally as well in combating that terrorist threat. It is an ever-present threat, yeah. not just here in the region, but globally, Australia has suffered uh, the loss of many hundreds mm -hmm. from uh, bombings in, in Bali, Indonesia. Uh, so we are determined to work collectively with Kenya mm -hmm. and we do cooperate in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and so we value Kenya as a partner mm -hmm. on this Mm -hmm. particular uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. We still continue to see bouts of uh, these attacks, the most recent um, in Lamu. Uh, we still see that uh, a bit in the north. Uh, how big of a concern is that uh, even as we collaborate around these efforts and even as we recognize that uh, a lot of efforts has been put in place and we can see the results, 
is it time perhaps to also rethink other strategies or think about other strategies to fully barefoot? Well, the global fight against terrorism mm. is one that's not just about military solutions. Mm. It's about the, uh, the military strategy yeah. working together with socio-economic mm -hmm. strategies. Because we all know that part of the, uh, the reason for why we continue to have these stresses mm -hmm. in the global system is that poverty continues to yeah. be a uh, blight uh, around the world. And so this continues to feed uh, those who are wanting to use terror mm -hmm. uh, to undermine mm -hmm the global rules-based order. Both Kenya and Australia yeah. are good global citizens. We want to ensure that the rules-based global order is maintained. Um, and so it's not just in a traditional security yeah. sense that we are uh, collaborating together, mm -hmm. but we have similar commitments to the Sustainable Development Goals, mm -hmm. which are critical mm -hmm. if we want to move the world to a place where terror mm -hmm. is not the threat that it currently is. All right. Let's talk about the fight against COVID-19, a uh, global phenomenon, and it, every country is trying its best to keep its populations as safe as possible. Um, African countries continue to lag behind in the vaccination of its populations, even though we are seeing significant strides that have been made. Uh, Australia being a big partner, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on um, collaborating around the fight against COVID uh, vaccinations, even in the midst of an ever-evolving virus. Yes, we're in a very different place to where we were just under two years ago. Mm -hmm. And as you be aware, Australia uh, developed a reputation very quickly yes. for closing its borders mm -hmm. to international travel to uh, try and keep COVID-19 out of the country. We were largely successful mm -hmm. for a period of time there. Um, Delta and then more so recently mm -hmm. Omicron yeah. has um, meant that COVID-19 now is um, very present mm -hmm. in much of Australia. Um, our strategy to combat it has been through vaccination. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've now reached 93% of our population age 16 and above being double vaccinated. We're mounting boosters program right now. We absolutely understand that the whole globe has to be vaccinated mm -hmm. to be able to combat COVID-19 going forward. Um, if there's anything we've learned about COVID-19 is expect the unexpected. Yeah. Um, so we've also been very much involved in helping that global fight through contributing to COVAX, which is supplying mm -hmm. uh, vaccines to Africa and also helping our uh, Pacific Island neighbours who mm -hmm. are very exposed when it comes to COVID-19. So we've been doing a, a lot of support there. Mm -hmm. And then looking at uh, the place that Kenya is right now, we're heading into an election in just under seven months, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm right, uh, on August 9th. And uh, it's already a politically heated season, being international partners here in Kenya. Um, how are you looking at this election? Uh, how do we intend uh, to contribute to stability in this particular period? I love elections. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we they're, all they're always interesting. <laughs> and we're going into our own election mm -hmm. too. We have to help hold a, yeah. a federal election by May of this year. Mm -hmm. um, so we understand absolutely the um, twos and fro's that are involved in uh, election campaigning. Uh, so the next six months are going to be fascinating here mm -hmm. in Kenya. It'll be my first opportunity to, mm -hmm. to witness it firsthand. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a lot of speculation mm -hmm. uh, about that. I don't want to add to the speculation mm -hmm. other than to say uh, that in Kenya, like in Australia, we understand the importance of democracy. Both of us are seen mm -hmm. as bastions of liberal democracy uh, in our regions and we want to be seen as leading the charge in uh, championing mm. our liberal democratic order. And so the elections that are coming up, both in Australia and mm -hmm. uh, Kenya, are fundamental to 
uh, selling to our populations mm -hmm. in the broader global community, mm -hmm. uh, the, not just the importance mm -hmm. of uh, liberal democracy, but mm -hmm. also that um, uh, our people uh, want uh, to continue with our democratic uh, institutions. Right. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I read avidly uh, your media every day about the twos and fro's mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. But even as uh, with the political environment, as exciting and as heated it, it is right now, are there any concerns or comments you have with the political processes so far in the country? No, well, it's, it's interesting. Every country has its own different take mm. on the political order. Um, and parliaments are each unique in particular. Um, and parliaments are fundamental to you know, democr democracy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I've been watching with interest how uh, your parliament operates. Right. Uh, you've had a very interesting debate about constitutional reform, mm -hmm. the BBI initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, so that remains uh, a fascinating mm -hmm. story that still is evolving. Um, and with the campaigning itself, mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to you know, being out there mm -hmm. and, and seeing uh, how the, the rallies unfold mm -hmm. um, and how the different parts of uh, Kenya, the different mm -hmm. counties and so forth, um, which way their leanings uh, go. <laughs> go. Because, um, <laughs> you know, there's still always a degree of uncertainty yeah. about what the outcome will be. Mm -hmm. um, it's clear that, um, you know, key candidates are now emerging. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, a mm -hmm. degree of certainty starting to appear there, but alliances are forming and reforming. But that's, that's what makes politics mm -hmm. interesting. It's the nature of politics. Uh, that's, it, that's the nature of politics, mm -hmm. exactly. As we wind up, the year is young. What does the year 2022 look like in terms of the Kenya-Australia relations? What do we have lined up? Well, I'm a huge optimist mm -hmm. with regards to our relationship. Um, I continually say to everyone that this is one relationship where, where there are few of any irritants. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a tremendous amount of goodwill on the part of Kenyans that I meet who have dealt with Australia. Um, they, they regard Australia very fondly. Mm. I'm amazed at how many Kenyans have studied in mm. Australia and uh, who come back with very positive stories mm. of their experience. So there's that reservoir mm. of goodwill that I feel is a strong foundation for us to further build mm the bilateral relationship, which, let's admit, is, is quite modest mm. in terms of its trade, um, investment, but certainly with its people-to-people -people links, and I think, too, uh, with the cooperation we do globally, mm -hmm. um, that there's only a positive story to tell going forward. Mm -hmm. So I'm hugely privileged to be here mm. uh, over the next few years to be helping uh, build that mm -hmm. relationship further and, and strengthen it and, and just take it to a, a, a much a better place for mm -hmm. us all. Very optimistic. I like that. Way to end the show. Thank you very much for joining us here for that conversation. Uh, Luke Joseph Williams is the Australian High Commissioner to Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, as well as Rwanda. And of course, just uh, speaking to us about the Australian National Day and the relations Kenya and Australia shares. And of course, it's a matter of wait and see how this political process goes. I hope we can have this conversation again at the end of it all. Thank you for joining us. Really glad to have you here on the show and thank you for your time. That's how we close it uh, here on Africa Speaks. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll be seeing you tomorrow, same time, same place. I am Akisa Andera. Good afternoon.